Thank you very much for the opportunity of presenting today. I'd start off, like to start off by acknowledging that I'm presenting here today on Gurungai country, the land of the Gadigal people. I would like to pay my respects to the past, present and future traditional custodians and elders of this land. So I'm speaking for heart today on behalf of CoGenes, which is a collaboration for genetic epilepsy and neurogenetics across Sydney Children's Hospital Network in Australia. Throughout the course of my doctoral thesis, I was lucky enough to be involved in groundbreaking research to understand more of the underlying genetic causes of severe early onset epilepsy. However, as a clinician, I recognise that behind every, drug, every gene discovery project, there's an individual patient. And this is one of our patients, Nell, who we diagnosed with a, a new condition called Cheddar. And she, like many children with a rare disease, have poor healthcare outcomes. They and their caregivers have poor experiences. We as doctors feel we're doing a poor job supporting patients with rare diseases and there are high healthcare costs. So we set up CoGenes, which is a collaboration between geneticists, neurologists, psychiatrists and psychologists um, to improve the diagnosis, management and support of children with genetic epilepsies and other severe neurogenetic conditions. We started first by listening to parents to understand what our research priorities should be. We held a genetic epilepsy family day. We did uh, our PhD student, Suzanne Nevin, conducted a systematic literature review about information and support needs. Um, she conducted interviews with 25 of our families. And we also started a consumer reference group so we could hold focus groups um, with families of children with genetic epilepsy to understand how our research should go and, and to get feedback as our research was developing. So Suzanne's work identified four main priorities. Families wanted early access to supportive, timely genetic counselling and information. This is a quote. It was a bit overwhelming when we were given that diagnosis and when you Googled. At the time, everything was bad, really bad. It was very hard to sit and read these articles and not being a doctor and not really understanding what a lot of the terminology meant. She also identified that families wanted practical supports to navigate the health, disability and education sectors. Um, and here's a, one of our families talking about the difficulty navigating systems. I really need to spell things out to people in order to get the services and supports that I need. And that's hard for me because it's obviously emotional. She also identified that families were struggling to access specialised psychological supports. Having that sort of support, just so you don't feel alone and lost, those people, the skills to be able to check in. I think that person-to-person -person support is really important. And also, families spoke about how great it was if they managed to find a connection with other parents who were work, walking the same journey as them. And this made me think about an article that um, Crystal O'Loughlin from Angel Aid um, pointed out to me, which talks about the four dimensions of support informational support, which is education about rare diseases and referrals for medical care, tangible support, practical things such as childcare, help with daily living tasks, emotional support to help people feel validated and understood by others, and companionship support to engage in activities with others resulting in a sense of belonging. So we've been trying to tackle those four areas in our initial two years at CoGenes, and I'd like to talk about some of those projects today. So Gene Compass is trying to address the needs of families who are constantly online trying to find information about their child's rare genetic epilepsy. Um, I, the Co Gene Compass team is our CoGenes team, as well as external collaborators, including Chris Pierce from Genetic Epilepsy Team Australia. And the service is about to be launched in October for a pilot for our families at City Children's Hospital Network. The idea is that families can call into an information linker support and get information directly tailored to their child's diagnosis. Um, although it's not a treatment service, we link back to patients' conditions for that. We also think it's really important that we're trying to empower clinicians to provide better care, and we're doing a gap analysis to identify information needs of clinicians. 
information that's generated from the Gene Compass project will not only go back to individual families, but will help us populate more um, websites on our Pediatric Epilepsy Network New South Wales um, website, which is a, an epilepsy support and information website, which is reached currently by over 40 countries. Also a focus on providing psychosocial supports. So Suzanne Nevin, our PhD student, worked with Professor Ken Nunn, um, a very um, eminent child psychiatrist, to look at the themes that were coming out from her interviews with families and develop a suite of video resources to talk parents through the six important um, themes that emerged from those um, uh, interviews uh, using a positive psychology approach. We've also um, conducted a pilot study in collaboration with exercise um, physiologists, um, Grace McKern and Simon Rosenbaum, to look at the impact on families of a short intervention involving exercise um, and peer peer support, which had great initial resource responses, and we'd love to expand that, um, and in particular to work with AngelAid to think about some ways that we can really improve the resiliency and peer-peer -peer connection of families. We're also delighted to be holding our next Family Day in October. But my research has also expanded to think beyond genetic epilepsies because really as a clinical geneticist, I realize there needs to be an improved model of care for all children with rare diseases. And Helen Clark's words are some that keep me going. No country can claim to have achieved universal health care if it has not adequately and equitably met the needs of those with rare diseases. In Australia in 2020, uh, we launched a national strategic action plan for rare disease with three pillars, awareness and education, care and support, and research and data. And at Sydney Children's Hospital Network, we've been working on a new model of care called gene to care where all rare disease patients are offered the opportunity of, um, of consenting to be part of a rare disease patient registry, linking to undiagnosed disease programs, linking to effective multidisciplinary care and to our pilot if they have genetic epilepsy of gene compass. We're also looking at how in collaboration with the UNSW to we can improve the genomic health literacy of those most marginalized in our society including individuals with intellectual disability and I'm very pleased to be awarded as part of a team across Australia and in collaboration with our um, Peak Body Rare Voices Australia, um, a grant which will be looking to improve rare disease awareness, education, support and training. So thank you so much for this opportunity of participating in this amazing conference. And I really wanted to highlight that this is the work of many, many individuals, part of CoGene's team and also other teams across um, UNSW, Sydney Children's Hospital Network and beyond. Thank you very much for your time.